In this video, we'll be taking a look at entry-level lithium iron phosphate portable power stations. We'll be taking a look at the low, medium, and high price points in this category. We'll discuss some of the features, and we'll go over some of the things that you can and cannot power with these power stations. I'll also show you how you can determine how much power a device uses to see if one of these power stations would be appropriate for your use. All three of these power stations feature lithium iron phosphate batteries. I didn't go with lithium or the older lead acid batteries because they have a decreased lifespan. In the case of lithium, there's actually an increased risk of fire. All three of these devices have similar features, including AC, DC, and USB outputs. All three power stations feature pure sine wave inverters for AC output, which means that they're safe for electronics. But at the different price points, you have different capacities. Starting with the low end, this inverter is capable of 320 watts max, and it will not go over that. The GoLabs R300 features a 300 watt inverter that can surge past that momentarily, so you can power a device that has a 350 watt startup power as long as it decreases below that fairly quickly. Finally, the Blue Eddy EB3A features a 600 watt inverter, so it's capable of powering a refrigerator of 350 watts no problem. As far as USB outputs, they all feature USB-A and USB-C outputs, but on the low end you have a single USB-C. The R300 has a 30 watt and a 60 watt power delivery port and the Blue Eddy has a 100 watt power delivery port and a wireless charger on top. All three power stations support pass-through charging so you can charge these power stations with solar while simultaneously charging your devices, but they do have different input maximums. This device tops out around 80 watts, the R300 tops out around 60 watts, and the Blue Eddy supports up to 200 watts of solar input. The other interesting thing about the Blue Eddy is it actually has a different port for solar and AC, so you can actually charge with both at the same time. And in addition to that, while you have grid power, this will act as a UPS. So while you have power, this will simply feed the power from the grid, and when the grid goes down, it'll start to use the battery. And what, as your battery depletes, if you have solar panels, the solar panels can start to top up the battery to keep this unit going. Hopefully your power comes back on before the sun goes down, and when it does, this will automatically switch back into UPS mode and provide power from the grid and charge the unit at the same time. Since these are typically used when there's a power outage, it's nice to know that there's a bright LED light built into all three of these as well. While all three have similar features, the EB3A takes each feature to the next level, except for in the category of battery capacity. This unit has 298 watt hours of capacity, the R300 has 299 watt hours of capacity, but the EB3A only has 268 watt hours of battery capacity. Now let's discuss some of the things that you can and cannot power with this graded power station. I originally purchased the R300 for the infamous Texas winter storm where we're going to have rolling blackouts. My goal was to power my refrigerator for a few hours until the power came back on. The pure sign inverter in this unit is 300 watts, but it has a surge capacity, so it's capable of powering my LG refrigerator. This unit, on the other hand, tops out at 320 watts. When I plug in my refrigerator, it goes just over that 320 watts and causes the unit to shut down. So I cannot use this unit for my refrigerator. The EB3A has a 600 watt inverter, so it has no problem powering my refrigerator. A modern refrigerator will be about the most powerful thing that you can power with a power station in this price range for a few hours. Anything below that obviously will also work fine as well, but if you're looking to power something like a microwave, which typically uses around 1800 watts of power, you're going to be looking at a power station that provides an inverter with at least 1800 watts as well. Now let's discuss how you can determine how much power a device uses. This is the kilowatt model P4400 from P3 International. This is usually used to forecast electrical utility costs of a particular device, but we can also use this device to estimate how long the device will last on our backup power systems. Using the kilowatt is fairly simple. Simply plug it into the wall, and then plug in the device that you want to monitor. In this case, we're looking at a floor lamp. By default, it's going to show the voltage, but what we're interested in is the wattage. So simply hit the watt button, and now we get a display of how many watts this light bulb is using. This floor lamp has a single LED light bulb that is consuming 9 watts, which is on the low end of the spectrum. You need to determine what device in your house is going to be consuming the most watts, and then purchase a power station that can meet those needs. A typical phone will use about 5 watts of electricity to charge, but more modern phones with fast charging could use as much as 20 watts. You might not even need a kilowatt for many appliances in your kitchen. 
This microwave, for example, once you open it up, it has a sticker that clearly indicates how much power this device is using. This microwave has the wattage listed in kilowatts. To convert this back to watts, simply multiply by 1,000. So this would be 1,580 watts. This LG refrigerator also has a sticker on the inside of the door. When I open the ice maker door all the way in the top left, there's a sticker that includes the wattage. Just below the serial number, we see that when this refrigerator is defrosting, it's expected to use 350 watts. Keep in mind that a refrigerator is not always in defrost mode and will be using less power when it's not defrosting. If you want to use your 70 inch TV during a power outage, you're going to need a pretty big system because it consumes about 220 watts. If the power goes down in the winter, a typical ceramic heater uses up to 1500 watts of electricity. If it goes down in the summer, this Ryobi hybrid fan uses 10 watts on low and 60 watts on high. This topic could be a whole nother video, but if you already have power tools, consider buying the accessories that can utilize your batteries. In this case, this is a hybrid fan from Ryobi that can use both an AC outlet or when the power goes out, I can use my power tool batteries to keep the fan going. This is turning into a video within a video, but don't forget about the tools that you already have. In my case, I have a work light that can light this entire room and a fan that can cool this entire room. Uh, Ryobi has a good assortment of accessories, so I've also picked up a Bluetooth speaker to provide entertainment during a power outage. And they also have a good lineup of power inverters where you can plug in a battery or a 12 volt cigarette lighter to power a 120 watt inverter. While the Ryobi inverters aren't powerful enough on their own to power my fridge, I can use them in conjunction with the power station since they have pass through charging. So I can drain the 40 volt and 18 volt batteries I have into the power stations and use the more powerful inverter on the power stations to power larger devices. So using this trick, I should be able to power my fridge through the next rolling blackout. Now finally, out of these three units, which one would I actually recommend? Well, if you're looking for value, this one is a great steal. I picked it up for $129. And if you're looking for highest capacity, the R300 is a great choice. But the best all-around unit is the Blue Eddy EB3A. Although it has the highest price point and the lowest capacity, it makes up for that with features. Because I can plug in 200 watts of solar input, this device will power my refrigerator all day. Ultimately, the right power station for you is the one that can power the device that you want to run for the number of hours that you want to run it. So if you're trying to power a microwave, none of these entry-level devices are for you. You might consider the EcoFlow Delta Pro or the AC200 Max from Blue Eddy. So this is the end of the review, but if you want to stick around, I'll go into a little bit more technical detail about how these devices actually run. If you were to tear down one of these portable power stations, these are the main components that you would find inside, namely a large lithium iron phosphate battery, a solar charge controller, and an inverter. Pretty simple, right? You could buy these pieces and make your own unit, but surprisingly, because they mass produce these units, it might be cheaper for you to buy a finished unit because they're able to get better prices on components. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions, please put them in the comments box below.